I have I have somewhat more organized you know, some trigonometry, and I have two sets of lectures notes. You guys tend to talk to each other, so one you make copies out of this, and you want a copy of this, and then why supersymmetry is not discussed there too much in these things. So there's some another set here. If you want, anybody else wants it? That you make copies from this. <laughs> Fermion we write as made of a four complex of these, but sometimes it's not on. So, so, and sometimes we write them as uh, two two component objects. So we'll see how the four component. Notation is related to two component notation. <coughs> the starting thing is that there are gamma matrices. Gamma mu. And these satisfy four of them, four matrices, four cross four matrices. They satisfy the Clifford algebra. that we already listed earlier. Let me write it again. Gamma mu, gamma nu, plus gamma nu, gamma mu is 2 times eta mu nu times a 4 cross 4 matrix, a unit 4 cross 4 matrix, where eta mu nu is diagonal and in our notation was plus 1 in time direction, minus 1, minus 1 and minus 1 in space directions. And these matrices, gamma matrices can be written in many equivalent ways. And there are many equivalent ways of writing these matrices many equivalent ways of uh, equivalent representation of gamma mu and these are related to each other through a similarity transformation related to similarity transformation and similarity transformation is some a gamma mu a inverse. If gamma mu satisfy this algebra, so will this. And one particular, one particular representation is what is called wild representation. 
and in wild representation gamma mu let me label their components through labels a and capital a and capital b where <coughs> capital a and capital b run 1 2 3 Four. Therefore, cross four matrices. Then this we break into two cross two blocks, diagonal block zero, diagonal block zero, and off diagonal block will give it a name gamma mu. The two cross two matrix and gamma mu bar. Again, a two cross two matrix, and we label the matrix elements of this through in this it labels alpha times alpha dot, alpha and alpha dot. Lower, both lower, and this one we'll label as beta dot first and beta next. Upper, both upper. Where now, alpha and beta both take values one and two. Well, alpha takes values one and two, and beta takes values one and two. Here also, a takes values one, b takes one, two, three, four. And alpha dot takes values one dot, two dot, and beta dot takes values one dot. That's just to a uh, way of labeling the matrix elements of these two matrices. And this gamma mu is a sigma mu that we have alpha alpha dot. For mu equal to zero, it's a unit two cross two matrix. And for mu equal to one, two, three, it's a sigma i. What sigma i is the poly matrix. Sigma one is zero, one, one, zero. Sigma two is zero i minus i, and sigma three is one, zero, zero minus one. So these are the four two cross two matrices sigma mu, sigma zero is one, and sigma i are three poly matrices. And then sigma bar mu, beta dot beta, because that's how we define. We sorry upper. This is lower. This is upper. For mu equal to zero, it's again a unit matrix. And for mu i, or i one two three, it's minus the poly matrix. Now this Clifford algebra that we wrote here, in terms of these sigma and sigma mu. Breaks into two sets of relations. Clifford algebra, and the two sets are sigma mu times sigma mu bar plus sigma mu sigma bar mu. You substitute that breaker into this, and this breaker into this. And take the product of two gammas, and then take the product of two gammas in reverse order, and see that this algebra breaks into two diagonal pieces, and upper diagonal piece is this object. And if you are careful with your indices, one of them will be down, second will be up.
then this object is twice eta v nu delta alpha eta. The other one, other di lower diagonal block would be sigma bar mu sigma nu plus sigma mu sigma nu bar sigma mu. The order of bars Unbarred, barred, unbarred, barred, barred, unbarred, barred, unbarred. And the indices for this will be alpha dot first, up, up beta dot, second down. And that object is twice beta nu alpha dot beta dot delta. So this is a rewriting this Clifford algebra in terms of these two cos two matrices. Now we also, in terms of those gammas, construct a chirality matrix. And we usually give a name gamma phi to it, which is product of all the gammas with a minus i, gamma 0, gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3. So for this wild representation of gamma mu, if you calculate the product of these four gammas and multiply by an i, it takes a very simple form. It is a diagonal matrix with a 2 cross 2 block which is an identity and minus a 2 cross 2 block an identity. So the basis that we have selected is the one in which gamma 5 is diagonal and gamma 5 measures the chirality and that is why while representation is a chiral because in wild representation gamma phi is diagonal. So if I now construct left and right projection operators, left and right projection operators, chirality operators and these are the left one PL is half 1 plus gamma phi and from here that is a matrix 1 0 0. So this projection matrix PL acting on Dirac fermions essentially picks up the first two components of the arc. So in this basis, we will call the first two components of a Dirac as left chiral fields for units. And similarly, if you collect the right handed projection, which is half 1 minus gamma 5, that from this is a unit 2 cross 2 matrix in the lower corner. So this one will project the lower two components of the Dirac fermion and that will be the right chiral projection of the Dirac fermion. Now what, how do the Lorentz generators look in this basis? So Lorentz generators. in while basis. Lorentz generators acting on fermions are given a name sigma mu nu 
which is i times 2 gamma mu gamma nu gamma mu times gamma nu minus gamma nu times gamma mu. Now we put it. So is that i by 2 or i by 4? i by 2 I have here. i by 4, you can write i by 4 also. That depends upon how you find put in it in the in the Lorentz transformation. Sometimes people put it 1 by 4, but then the corresponding thing in the Lorentz transformation has one factor of 2 less. So this, this, this factor is uh, more for convenience. Can, come on by convenience, if, it, if you do it with this factor, then if you see, study the algebra of this object, then it would be normalized in the standard way of a Lorentz transformation. They generate the Lorentz transformation have to satisfy all for Otherwise, it has factor. So what is interesting is that in this while basis, the generators of Lorentz transformation acting on fermions also takes a block diagonal form. We call them sigma mu nu, 0, 0, sigma bar mu nu. Straightforward algebra from here. Use this representation for gammas. That's the while basis of gammas, and calculate the commutator of two gammas, and you discover they take a block diagonal form of this kind. Why sigma mu nu? And if you keep track of their spinorial indices, it, this is a two cross. Each one of them is a two cross two matrix. There are six of them because the mu nu is anti-symmetric. Mu nu anti-symmetric makes six pairs. So there are six such matrices. And they are also in, in spinner space, two cross two. That two cross two, six matrices. And if you keep track of the labels, matrix labels, alpha down, beta up, first and second. That turns out to be simply i by 2 sigma mu sigma bar nu minus sigma nu sigma bar mu alpha beta. While sigma mu and sigma mu bars are these objects. And the lower block here is sigma bar mu nu alpha dot first up beta dot second is i by 2 sigma bar mu sigma nu minus sigma bar nu sigma nu of alpha dot first beta dot second. And if you look at these objects, you realize that this object is nothing but this sigma mu nu that we constructed here and taken alpha beta component of this and take a joint. And when you do the adjo joint, you will discover that alpha, you will really label alpha by alpha dot and beta by beta dot and they will come in this combination. Okay. 
so uh, and this is hermitian conjugate hermitian conjugate take the complex conjugate and also the transpose now these matrices have some nice properties they are traceless sigma mu nu traceless means alpha alpha is the trace and that is zero and sigma bar mu nu alpha dot alpha dot is zero another interesting property these are ones have is that these are self dual and in anti self dual respectively this one is self dual this one is anti self dual what do we mean by that that sigma mu nu is same as 1 by 2 i epsilon mu nu lambda rho sigma lambda rho this is how you define the dual here with an i here if you define dual like this then this and this are the same and similarly for the bars one they are anti self dual Yes, 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 yes. This is one by i. The same. Okay. My notation is mu nu lambda rho. These things run over zero, one, two, three, four. These are the Greek Greek indices. We start. in the middle of the greek alphabet run from 0 1 2 3 4 what is those that start at the beginning of the alphabet greek alphabet alpha beta gamma sometimes they run over 1 2 or 1 dot 2 that's the notation Exercise. Sorry, sigma bar. Yes, correct. Exercise. Sigma bar mu alpha dot alpha. Now remember, sigma bar mu we decide, had defined it with indices alpha dot up and beta yeah, alpha down. Here I have raised it up. Okay, so you raise the spinner indices. Epsilon alpha beta, or epsilon upper, or epsilon lower be alpha beta, or epsilon alpha beta dot or dot alpha with alpha epsilon one by two is minus epsilon two by one is equal to one, and it's minus of epsilon. One by two, which is plus of epsilon to one. Epsilon up one by one two is minus of epsilon to one, and that is one. And epsilon down one by two is negative. Okay, 
and epsilon 1 1 is 0 and epsilon 2 2 is 0. And similarly, epsilon 1 dot 2 dot is same as epsilon 2 dot 1 dot and that is equal to 1 and that is 1 dot 2 dot is epsilon. So you raise and lower the spinner indices through these epsilons. And then that's what we have done. We have raised this alpha from that. But then what you see is that this is same as alpha dot alpha beta times epsilon alpha beta of sigma mu beta beta dot. This is a way of way of relating unbarred sigmas with barred sigmas. So this is an exercise. Show that this is so. To relate unbarred sigmas with barred sigmas, multiply by two epsilons in that particular order. And also the converse relation, sigma mu of alpha alpha dot is equal to epsilon alpha beta epsilon alpha dot beta dot of sigma mu r beta dot And the way we have written them, you notice that these are each other's inverses. They are in each other's inverses. So this is an epsilon, this is epsilon inverse. Because if you take the product of these two, you will get an identity. So that is exercise 1, another exercise. Take sigma mu nu that we constructed here. It has indices alpha and beta, alpha down, beta, second one is beta up. This can be written as sigma mu nu, sigma beta epsilon beta. Something is not right. Uh, oh no, I forgot. I mean, beta twice. Here also we have beta sigma. Yeah. So if you take sigma mu and multiply it by epsilon beta sigma, that is same as sigma mu. So which means this combination is symmetric between interchange of alpha and sigma. And similarly, and from here, I can write mu nu alpha beta is same as B epsilon beta sigma, sigma mu nu, sigma rho, epsilon rho alpha. Essentially, multiply it by an epsilon inverse and take it on this side, and this is what you'll see.
which means sigma mu nu sandwich between two epsilons simply change the sign. Is that clear? Sigma mu nu sandwich between two epsilons simply changes the sign. So, in the four component notation for Dirac fermions, a Dirac fermion, we represent as some psi, let me psi cat, and it has four components, we label those components by capital A. And this we break into two, com two, two component objects. The upper one, let me give it a name small psi alpha, and lower one, I will give it a name phi bar. And chi bar up upper alpha dot. So alpha takes values 1 and 2, and alpha dot takes values 1 dot and 2. So we are rewriting four component Dirac fermion in terms of two component Y fermion and another two component object called this psi, called this chi bar. That's coming in naming. This object you know uh, as a representation of Lorentz group, you know how to re do representation of Lorentz group. You've done this sometime? Hmm? Representation of Lorentz group is given by giving two spin values of SU2. And a Dirac fermion is a reducible representation of the Lorentz group. It's made up of two representations. One of them is labeled as half, zero. The other one is labeled as zero half. The generators of Lorentz group, the sigma mu nu that we capital sigma mu nu we constructed, it can be broken into generators of two SU twos. But we, you've done this by taking sigma 0 i plus i times sigma i j combination and normalize the problem and the other one with it. And that breaks into two SU2 algebras decoupled, but not completely decoupled in the sense of uh, is that, that the generators under complex conjugation go into each other. So they are not two SU2 factored groups. The algebra is factored out, but the Lorentz group it does not factor into two SU2s. In the, but what happens is that if the algebra group um, factors into two SU2s, and the representative, but uh, in a way that the generators of the two SU2s are each other's conjugate. And then the represent finite dimensional representations then can be labeled as the representations of those SU2 algebras. Each SU2 algebra is given, representations are given by spins, J. So finite dimensional representation, finite dimensional representation is important. That makes a difference. Not other representations, only finite dimensional representations can be labeled by two integers. And the Dirac spinner, 
is a composite representation under those two SC twos. It's a representation which transforms like a doublet under first SC two, and and another component of it transforms like a doublet under second SC two. This one, with respect to first SC two, transforms like a trivial representation, one-dimensional representation, and this one has a second SC two. And Dirac fermion is a combination of these two. In fact, each one of them is a representation of Lorentz group. That's why Dirac fermion is a reducible representation of Lorentz group. And this representation is precisely this one, and this one is precisely these two components. <laughs> And from the chirality operator, gamma phi, which is diagonal in our basis, we clearly see that the first two components, if I operate gamma phi, uh, the projection, say, PL on this, on this side, PL on, simply gives me the upper two components and it gives me and PR on this capital side gives me the two of low components. So these upper two components and the two lower two components of the rock fermion are really the left components and the right components of the Iraq. And each one is a representation of the Lorentz group and Dirac fermion is a composite representation. That is why Dirac fermion is a reducible representation. Let us see how they transform under Lorentz transformations. Now you will see the factor of half. Under Lorentz transformation, a Dirac fermion goes to a Dirac transform, Dirac fermion, and which is given by a transformation matrix U of theta, where theta are the six parameters of the Lorentz transformation times psi, and x is transformed by U inverse x. This is how the Lorentz transformation acts on the upper end. <laughs> X is a four vector, and <coughs> this is U inverse acting on four vector, which is the how the four vector transforms under Lorentz transformation, like as a vector representation. Whereas this is a four cross four matrix in the Dirac space. So this u is in the vector uh, representation in the vector space, but this u is in the Dirac space. And how is this 4 cross 4 matrix given? Let me write it down in components now. It has a components A and B. And this transformation if you breaks into block diagonal transformation small u theta of alpha beta 0 0 u theta 
R of alpha dot beta dot. And normally, how do we write this? We write it as exponential minus i by 4 theta mu nu sigma. The generator here times the transmission parameters times i by 4. Now, if you have taken there 4 here, you will have to put 2 here, that is in the definition. And since we know that sigma mu nu breaks into block diagonal form, so these objects break into block diagonal form here. And you can work it out what these objects look like. And you work it out and these objects look like. U, small u theta alpha beta is equal to exponential minus i by 4 theta mu nu sigma mu nu alpha beta and u bar theta alpha dot beta is exponential minus i by 4 theta mu nu sigma mu So, from here I can read off now how do the upper two components of Dirac fermion transform under Lorentz transformation and how do the lower two components transform under Lorentz transformation. So, the upper two components that is psi alpha goes to psi alpha prime, this small psi. psi alpha beta beta. Well, u is this matrix. And how do the lower two components transform? Chi bar alpha dot up is chi bar prime alpha dot up and that is u bar of theta alpha dot up beta dot down chi bar beta. Now, this object we said corresponding to this representation. So, this is half zero representation and this one is zero half representation. So, now what we see is that we know how the half zero representation transforms under Lorentz group and we know how zero half representation transforms and each one of them is a representation of Lorentz group. And that's why Dirac fermion is a composite representation. These are irreducible representations, spinner representations, to the left-handed one and the right-handed one. Well, a Dirac representation is a reducible representation. Now, this is a small exercise. You could do it. I can rewrite this object in the following way. Take this u theta is defined by this object and then take a dagger, uh, the dagger of it and then take an inverse of it.
So u bar theta is dagger inverse of u. Check that and you will need to use some of these identities here. Now, these small u's have some nice properties. Let's list some of these properties they have. U is a 2 cos 2 matrix. Return in this way with determinant 1. That implies epsilon alpha beta is equal to U alpha gamma times U beta delta times alpha. Is that obvious? The determinant of a 2 plus 2 matrix is 2 epsilon times the matrix normalized by some factor half. So you take 1 epsilon on the other side. And similarly, alpha upper alpha beta is epsilon gamma delta u gamma alpha u delta. And epsilon alpha beta u star alpha dot gamma dot u star beta dot delta dot epsilon gamma dot delta dot and epsilon alpha dot beta dot is epsilon gamma dot delta dot u star gamma dot dot u star delta dot beta dot. Check these, you would need with these properties. But what does these me properties mean? These properties mean that epsilon multiplied by two u's is an epsilon. But u is the Lorentz transformation of spinner index delta because that's how on two spinners it x so u transforms this u transforms this lorentz uh, this this spinner in index 
this u transforms this one. So this tells me epsilon symbol is after two trans these transformations is the same as epsilon. So epsilon is an invariant tensor in under Lorentz transformations. Similarly for epsilon dots. So this tells us symbols epsilon alpha beta and epsilon alpha dot beta are Lorentz invariant. Excise. Show that U inverse alpha beta components can be written as epsilon beta sigma U sigma rho epsilon rho alpha. This is, if you look at closely, rewriting this identity. This is the identity for sigma mu nu and u is exponential of sigma mu nu times theta mu nu. So write that object at sigma mu nu. So the sigma mu nu when multiplied by 2 epsilon changes sign. So if I put sigma mu, 2 sigma mu nu, uh, 2 epsilons on this object, it changes the sign of sigma mu nu. That changes the sign. That is u inverse. Is that clear? So the u inverse can be written as u with two sigmas, two uh, epsilons contracted. So if you want to gener generate u inverse for a representation, you simply do this. In some sense, the epsilons, two epsilons conjugate the u. convert u to an u inverse. They convert sigma mu nu to minus sigma mu nu and they convert as a conjugation in spinal space u to u inverse. So some, some more notation now. I think I said it earlier but let me say it again. symmetric symbols alpha beta E alpha and its inverse uh, epsilon alpha beta down and epsilon I alpha dot beta dot and its inverse epsilon alpha dot up, beta dot up. Why do we have defined them by those values? Did I rub it off? No. In the, there. These values are used to raise and lower the spinor and Are used to raise lower spinoral indices.
which is I write psi alpha up as same as alpha beta psi beta down or conversely psi alpha down is epsilon alpha beta psi beta up and similarly for chi is chi bar alpha down is alpha dot beta dot chi bar beta up. And chi alpha up, alpha dot up is epsilon alpha dot beta dot up, chi dot beta dot down. Remember, we said that under complex conjugation, the generators of Lorentz group, which we, the algebra breaks into two AC2s, the two AC2s go into each other. So, which means under complex conjugation, if I start with a half zero representation and do complex conjugation to it will become 0 half representation, which is that left-handed Dirac fermion, left-handed projection under complex conjugation will become right-handed. Similarly, the other way around. 0 half under complex conjugation will become half 0. So, which means that if I take psi alpha, which was the upper two components of the graph fermion, which was the left handed projection of the Dirac fermion, so which corresponded to a representation half 0. Under complex conjugation, it will become a representation under the other SU2. So I call it a bar. And other SU2, we have given labels, the labels as dot. So we will label this as alpha dot. So, psi alpha star is psi bar alpha dot means under complex conjugation if I take the upper component of this object and take the complex conjugate of that, that will become an upper component of a right handed Dirac and right handed fermion. And if I take the lower component of this object and take a complex conjugation of that, that will become the lower. And those we label as alpha and alpha, alpha dot, alpha 1 dot and 2 dot. So, this notation should not be confusing. It is complex conjugation and renaming of 1 by 1 dot and 2 by 2 dot. Clear? Similarly, upper one star is psi upper dot psi bar upper dot now let's do a little bit of algebra
take psi alpha and transform it under Lorentz group psi alpha up and psi alpha up is is epsilon alpha beta psi prime beta down that is how we set the rule of raising and lowering you know because that is how this object transforms. Now let me convert this is down let me convert it up by an epsilon. Prescribed how the psi down transforms under Lorentz transformation. What we are trying to see is that how does psi up transform under Lorentz transformation? Given that definition that we wrote earlier, psi up is psi prime up, and that in terms of psi prime down is epsilon alpha beta times psi prime down. And raise this up, right? and this object transforms under Lorentz transformation like this. And now we raise the rho to lambda by multiplying it by an epsilon. Now this object, did I rub off that or I think well, that was some exercise here, is this. Two epsilons and u. In the same order of indices. So therefore this object is write psi lambda on this side, collect this whole thing together is u inverse of lambda alpha up. Is that clear? Write psi lambda first, this combination is u inverse and indices are lambda contracted with lambda first and this is how. Let me write it once again. Psi down alpha down, this is what we had written earlier was u alpha beta psi beta and from there we worked out with the transformation properties of psi up, alpha up. And transformation properties of psi alpha up what, what is precisely inverse u if this is u. That tells me psi alpha up times psi or any other chi what I have I used some name for it, some chi alpha. Now chi alpha bar is not chi alpha bar, it is some other psi chi. So because this is, I could take another fermion, call it chi alpha down. Then psi alpha times chi alpha. Psi alpha up transforms by u inverse psi chi alpha down transformed by u. This is Lorentz invariant. You can do the similar exercise similarly and convince yourself that chi bar alpha dot 
down times another spinner psi bar alpha dot up is also Lorentz invariant. Is that clear? This is needs some getting used to if you have not done these things earlier. So, so in order to construct a Lorentz invariant from two half zero representations, because they are both half zero, they are, they are unbarred objects, from two half zero, which means two left handed while for neons, you simply take the upper one and the lower one and contrast them, which is, now let me write this again, psi alpha, chi alpha is the same as epsilon alpha beta, chi beta, sorry, psi beta, chi alpha. because raising is done through epsilon. Is it clear? Now let me interchange the order here. And these are fermions. If I interchange two fermions, they change sign. So I'll write it minus epsilon alpha beta chi alpha psi beta. Now let me use this epsilon to raise this. But my raising convention. is the second index is summed on epsilon. So if I want to raise this, I will write this epsilon beta alpha and change the sign because this is anti-symmetric. Chi alpha psi beta. This I can write now as chi beta times psi beta. So with this convention of indices, psi up chi alpha is same as chi up psi down. interchange psi and chi interchanged. Is that clear? This is that and this object I will shorthand I will call it psi times chi. And whenever I did psi times chi the convention is first index up, second index down. And sum. It's not first index down and second index up. The convention is first index up, second index down. And then that is same as chi psi. They are fermions. And that's why this is this is the property, which means that both down anti commute. But when you define the product of these two in by this convention, psi up and chi down, then that's the same as chi up and psi down. 
clear now similarly you can do it for the barred ones psi bar chi bar now psi bar chi bar is a shorthand for psi bar alpha dot chi bar alpha dot notice the convention here for barred object it's lower upper for unbarred objects it's upper lower so psi chi is psi alpha up chi alpha down whereas psi bar chi bar these are both the zero half representation their product is defined with alpha dot down and alpha dot up now this is uh, now straightforward exercise is that do the same same trick here and you will be able to uh, find that this is same as chi and psi interchanged and the index on chi brought down and index on psi lifted up should spend some time doing practice with these things to get used to it now similar exercise take psi bar no take psi and take sigma mu nu and chi bar this is a shorthand for what you remember sigma mu nu was defined as with with indices alpha and alpha dot both down the spinner in the labeling for sigma mu nu from your notes if you remember was given alpha down and alpha dot down and this side is alpha up so when i write these objects without indices the rule is of con contraction of upper with down undotted ones that is what we use there psi chi upper with down so this is how the spiral in spinner in indices contract here and for barred objects we had the convention alpha dot down alpha dot up so this object this is the shorthand for this object So every time when you write like this, unbarred to be contracted up down, and barred to be contracted down up. Now, if you evaluate this, now on the other hand, now if I evaluate chi sigma. mu psi bar and take but dagger and star is the same object here because this is just a number right all indices are contracted except for sigma mu sigma mu is a matrix anyway they but dagger and star is same so if if i take the dagger of this object which is chi psi bar so bars have been in, interchanged then this object is same as that object next let me write chi bar sigma bar mu 
side. This is the shorthand by our convention of chi bar alpha dot down, sigma bar mu alpha dot. See sigma mu bar, if you remember the note, the way we had labeled it, we had labeled it dotted index first up and undotted index text up. So this object and this object is conjugate of psi bar sigma bar mu chi dagger. The same object here that we wrote here. Psi alpha up, sigma mu nu, alpha alpha dot down, alpha dot one. This combination is what we gave the name shorthand like this. Use this identity. to reorganize this and check that this is same as chi dot alpha dot sigma bar alpha dot alpha psi. So you notice what we have done is that the psi and chi bar order has been changed. Chi bar has come first, psi bar has come here. That will change, give you an extra change of sign. Hmm? But upper and lowering, you have to keep track of it and then you will discover is that upper and lowering when you do it with epsilons, you need two epsilons. That will convert sigma to sigma bar. Is that clear? Repeat. Is that what we have done is you lower this down because that is down through an epsilon. You lower this again through an epsilon, epsilon to get this. So you will have two epsilons here. Interchange the lowered objects, both lowered objects here that will give you an extra sign with two epsilon sitting between sigma and use the identity that this is this. Similarly, if you do psi bar sigma mu nu so, uh, psi times sigma mu nu chi. Now, psi, the convention is this is a shorthand for psi alpha sigma mu nu. Sigma mu nu had in spinal indices, if you remember, first one alpha down, second one beta up. This object. Is this is the shorthand? <coughs> Sigma mu nu alpha beta alpha down beta up. Contraction alpha up alpha down. Contraction beta up beta down. Now lower this down by an epsilon and then interchange alpha uh, chi and beta sorry lower this down and uh, and raise this up through an epsilon so you'll have two epsilons and then interchange chi and psi so you have a chi here sigma mu nu 
psi here with a minus sign. That's this identity. There's a minus sign. Uh, is this right? Is this right? There is a minus sign already here. Check on this. Do I have it right? Check on this. Or it, it's it possible that when you do the contraction with two epsilons, you may have to bring these epsilons back to you know interchange one of them, and that will convert the sign. I think this is right. Or maybe just check on this. Next, let's study what charge conjugation. Charge conjugation means in this language. Remember, charge conjugation matrix or the four component Dirac for beyonds is the matrix I times gamma 0, gamma 2. Now, this object, if I write it in terms of the while basis now to these gammas, it is a diagonal I sigma 2, I sigma 2. So, if I take a Dirac fermion four component object A, which is written in our ways in two component objects, is psi alpha down and chi alpha dot up. Under charge conjugation, it transforms into psi charge conjugate of A and this object is defined as the charge conjugation matrix AB times psi bar bar transform. That is the definition of charge conjugation matrix. Charge conjugation of Dirac fermion and times B. Take the psi bar, take the transpose, multiply by CAB, and that is what charge conjugation of a Dirac fermion is. Now, let us do it here in this corner. Psi bar. A is psi dagger gamma 0 A, which for this object is chi alpha psi alpha dot bar. Dagger is complex conjugation, and we said complex conjugate of psi alpha is psi bar alpha dot now complex conjugation of psi alpha is psi bar alpha, alpha dot complex conjugation of chi bar alpha dot is chi alpha gamma naught is the off diagonal unit matrix to block so that interchanges the two and transpose makes Instead of being a four component column, it makes the four component row. 
these are the two components and these are the two components. So now use this i sigma 2 i sigma 2 0 0 minus here times <coughs> chi beta and psi beta dot down. I call these alphas betas now. And that is minus i sigma 2 alpha beta chi beta i sigma 2 alpha dot dot psi bar theta dot. You see in this if you keep track of the indices this block has spinner indices alpha beta down. This block has alpha dot beta dot up. So that is what I wrote this times this. this times this and this times this. Now I times sigma 2, sigma 2 is the second poly matrix, I times sigma 2 is And I have minus i times sigma 2. That makes it minus and plus. So this is epsilon. Now this is same as epsilon alpha beta. So epsilon alpha beta chi beta and this object is epsilon dot beta dot psi bar beta dot down. This object has one has opposite sign and remember if I they, they are still there epsilon alpha beta up down and epsilon dot alpha beta down have a relative sign in the definition. No. But how does the sign change here? There should be a sign change here. Yeah, no, one is down and other is up. That is what it is, right? Yeah. Yeah. So one, two and 1 to down, there is a relative sign. This is plus 1, this is minus 1. And this object, we know epsilon alpha beta by chi up is chi down. This object is psi bar alpha up. So what has charge conjugation done? Let me rewrite again. Psi, Dirac fermion psi charge conjugate A is chi alpha down, psi bar alpha up, whereas psi A was psi alpha down, chi bar alpha dot. So charge conjugation of a Dirac fermion takes the complex conjugation of the lower two component and puts it up. with an 
index lowered to an absolute. And <coughs> the upper two component takes a conjugate of that, complex conjugate of that, and pulls it down and raises his index up. Now, if a fermion is self conjugate, not a Dirac fermion, Dirac fermion has four components two independent here, two independent here. But I can think of another fermion, self conjugate fermion. Which has the property that psi conjugate is same as psi. Then such a fermion in this while basis would be psi alpha psi bar alpha, where psi bar alpha star uh, alpha dot is complex conjugate of this. Because that will tell me this is equal to this and that this is complex conjugation. So which means such a fermion will not be made up of four independent components, but will be made up of only two independent components. These and these are complex conjugate of the same two elements. Is that clear? A self conjugate fermion, instead of having four degrees of freedom like the Dirac fermion, will have only two degrees of freedom. independent components, independent complex components. And they, this is also a representation of Lorentz group. In fact, it's really, if you look at it, only one representation because this is simply a complex conjugate of that. This is half 0 and this is 0 half, but this 0 half has no more independent degrees as this one because it is simply conjugate. It is not a different complex set of two complex numbers, which is what Dirac fermion was. This and these are two independent two complex parameters. Whereas this one and this one are the same set because there is a simply complex conjugate of that. So this has half the degrees of freedom, but this is self conjugate. Self conjugate is that such a fermion cannot have electric charge. Dirac fermion has electric charge, but this fermion does not have electric charge, no electric charge. And this representation was discovered for Lorentz group by a man called Majorana. So this therefore it is also called Majorana, Majorana representation. So we have fermions come in different kinds, Dirac fermions, Majorana fermions and Weyl fermions. Is it clear? Majorana fermions are self conjugate. Majorana fermions do not carry any electric charge. I think we will stop at that today. What are the S2 indices? Listed there. I think the name is, how do we understand? No, it's see there what you one is talking about is those two see Dirac is half zero plus zero half, where these objects are independent objects. And under complex conjugation they go on to each other, but they are independent objects. Two components here, two components here. Right? So you may call it prime. Is that 
it's a different hmm? and which is this is psi alpha psi alpha bar whereas <coughs> Majorana is half zero plus half zero complex conjugate the same two numbers complex conjugate So, which is it is psi alpha plus psi alpha psi alpha star. Is this uh, <coughs> no, it's not because it says only two independent components, right? Now, if you look at now that the Majorana fermion and the Weyl fermion have the same degrees of freedom. Because this Majorana fermion is only, see, this is wild. And as a Dirac 4 fermion, this is simply complex conjugate of that wild. The same wild, same two degrees of freedom, same two independent components. So, wild and Majorana are, have the same de degrees of freedom. How does one distinguish them? One distinguishes them by charge conjugation property. And we'll see that uh, maybe once we start writing the nonsense, how wow, you can do it. Uh, you, you'll see that you can never, you cannot write a mass term for wild fermion, single wild fermion. Even for a mass term, you need two wild fermions, which is again saying that you can write mass term for Dirac fermion because Dirac fermion is made of two wild fermions. But you can write a mass term for Majorana fermion. We'll see that. So, Majorana fermions can be massive, while fermions cannot be massive. But while fermions will be massive only if they come in pairs as components of a Dirac fermion. Majorana fermions will be chargeless, that we see already here because they are self conjugate. Dirac fermions have charge, while fermions have charge. We will we'll see that maybe in one of these later lectures. I think this is a good place to start.